Hello, uh, it's Lee Pallister here from Sovereign Grace Reformed Church in Tiverton, Devon, that's southwest England. This is just a very uh, brief message explaining the doctrine of total depravity. It's a much misunderstood doctrine, and so I'll, I'll endeavor to explain it simply by God's grace. Uh, the Bible, God's most precious word, teaches us for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's in Romans 3.23. In Romans 3.10, it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Firstly, the doctrine of total depravity does not mean that man is not capable of showing love and kindness and mercy and care and good manners and decent morals and so on. After all, man is made in the image of God with the law of God written upon our hearts. Hence, we have a conscience. What it does mean, however, is that every part of man's senses and faculties have been corrupted by the consequences of Adam and Eve's original sin. As David the psalmist puts it in Psalm 51.5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And in Romans 5.12 it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Think about it. Why is it that the producers of wildlife programs, as nice as they are sometimes, almost always concentrate on the kill and the hunt? Why is that? Is it not because they understand, whether they realize it or not, that man by nature is drawn to darkness, drawn to violence? The Gospel of John 33, 19 says, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Total depravity means exactly what it says on the tin, as it were, that every part of our senses and our faculties have been totally corrupted. Our eyes, our ears, our minds, our hearts, they are, they are not utterly corrupted, but they are totally corrupted, meaning that they are totally depraved. Every one of our faculties has been affected. Not one of them has not been affected. Tell me something. If a projector screen was above your head of all the thoughts that you have of every minute of every day, how long would you go out for? Mankind's mind has been corrupted. Mankind's heart has been corrupted and is totally depraved in its natural estate. It says in Jeremiah 17:9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and who can know it? And so the heart, the desire of a man in its natural estate, is a deceiver unless a work of grace is done in the heart of a man. That person will be misled and ensnared by their own sinful heart. He that trusteth in his, in his own heart is a fool, says Proverbs 28.26. And we see this especially nowadays, don't we? How Satan the devil keeps man's sinful heart occupied with the many, many vain distractions out there. In our Western culture, many of us have been deceived into thinking that we do not even have a soul. Surely the reason why there is such a demand for violent movies and excessive sports and pornography and blasphemous comedy and jesting, immoral and ungodly music and a host of other filth is because of the desire of the heart. Our hearts and minds, before true conversion takes place, are destitute of the truth. The unregenerate and unsaved heart and mind continually employs the eyes, the ears, the hands and one's own body to carry out its dirty work. As it says in Ecclesiastes 1.8, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, and nor the ear filled with hearing. Our faculties are totally depraved and corrupted. In, in, in our natural fallen estate, nothing in this world can satisfy our corrupt inner and outer desires to gratify the flesh. We have a great void which only Christ can truly fill. That which is by nature crooked cannot be made straight. It is only when, by God's divine grace, we look beyond ourselves to someone who is far greater than ourselves, yea, who has not been corrupted, who is perfect and holy in all his ways. And, and Jesus Christ alone is able to satisfy the longing soul because he is holy and perfect. 
and yet was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Only him who has not been corrupted, we in all our faculties and senses have been corrupted, and we have that void that only Christ can fill. Nothing in this world can fill except the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so I hope um, this message has been of an encouragement to you. Um, of course, this is not an exhaustive study on the subject. Um, there's a lot more that can be said, but I hope this has been edifying. And may God's grace be with you.